Hello, everyone. Welcome to Sneak Live. We have a very special show for you today. Uh, Eric and Adolfo are going to be talking about SIG Store, so some Docker and Kubernetes fun stuff headed your way. Hope you got your YAML files ready. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on my good friend and co-host here, Mr. Eric Smalling. Hi, Eric. Good morning, Kyle. Good afternoon to everyone on the... It's not quite afternoon for you yet, is it? Uh, you know, it's noon, so we'll call it. Okay. Well, good afternoon to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's it's twelve oh two, so it is afternoon. So I think we can we can you know just call it there. But uh, you know, I think we have a really special show today. Uh, as we all know, there have been a lot of interesting developments. I think it, what was it in on May third, like Kubernetes one point two four dropped or something like that, um, somewhere around there. And there were some major developments as far as Six Store goes, and the adoption has been massive. So I think um, let's bring on our special guest to talk about that. Welcome, Adolfo, to the stream. Hey, hello, Kyle. Hello, Eric. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for joining us. Awesome. So, um, Adolfo, can you tell us a little bit about what you do? Yeah, well, uh, in my day job, I am a software engineer with ChainGuard. Uh, we're a company specializing in supply chain security. And I also I am also one of the technical leads for Kubernetes SIG release, uh, where I've been working on improving the security of the Kubernetes releases uh, for, I don't know, some years now, I think. Wow. So I know what Kubernetes is, and I know, you know, CNF, and we all, we all do. But just for anyone who's joining that might be new to the Docker Kubernetes world, Kubernetes is an orchestrator uh, for containerized workloads. I mean, it does a lot of things, but that's uh, the, its main purpose in life. And it is a very distributed uh, platform, if you will. It's got a lot of Go application bits that get packaged up and built by the release team. Um, it is part of the Linux Foundation, CNCF Foundation umbrella. Um, and um, so Adolfo, you, you've said you've been with the, the release special interest group, right? Uh, how long have you been with them and how did you get involved with Kubernetes? So I, I started uh, approaching the Kubernetes project in, I don't know, probably two, 2017, 18, I think. Okay. Uh, first, uh, I started uh, getting involved with uh, the Gates Infra group, which is the, the, the folks that manage the Kubernetes infrastructure. Uh, at that time, it was a work group. Now it's a full-blown uh, SIG, special interest group. And then from then, I started getting involved with SIG release. Um, I was part of the Kubernetes 118 Released him and then started collaborating with the uh, with the people there who are now very dear friends of mine, and well, just getting in more and more contributions and helping uh, build the tooling that releases Kubernetes. And uh, over time, I became a release manager. First, a release manager associate, release manager, and then a technical lead for the SIG. And yeah, and then for the past, um, I think two years or so, we started uh, working in, well, as the whole industry, right? Uh, uh, started looking into some uh, very interesting developments and new um, technologies and proposals for securing the, uh, the supply chain uh, of all the software in the world, or in our case, in, uh, for Kubernetes, uh, because we were the SIG that was uh, ideally place to do that. And yeah. so we started uh, looking into things like building S-bombs for the project, uh, signing uh, the the artifacts that we put out, and, and things like uh, improving our processes to be compliant with things like Salsa, for example, uh, which is a security framework, which we can uh, also discuss if you, if you think it's interesting. <laughs> Well, it's, it's cool. I mean, the way Kubernetes uh, releases work, there used to be uh, four of them a year, and now there's three as of last year, I believe. Exactly. And um, explain a little bit about how the, the cap process works. How, how do features and enhancements and fixes get slated for a release in Kubernetes? And if you want to follow on, who 
kind of was the the genesis of the the signing of artifacts in 124 and how did that kind of come up through that process oh, okay yeah so signing the kubernetes artifacts has been a recurring issue in many shapes and forms uh, for years now uh we had an issue to sign i think artifacts using uh gpg for open for i think five years now or so and then um but signing signing things is hard because it involves uh lots of trust issues it involves key management it involves uh securing the process and access to, to those keys and so we i mean the, the the issues were open uh for example right now we we have a uh we are working on so part of the kubernetes releases involve putting out uh devs and rpm packages for linux distributions and currently those those packages are signed by google by actual google employees who run internal tooling that signs those those are those packages and upload them to to their the repositories we are in the process of moving that um, those those packages to community-owned infrastructure, and and they're they're going to be signed with a community-owned key. And so it was uh, comparing that uh, with a uh, signing of artifacts that we currently do was like uh, relieving all of those days of GPG things and and things yeah. like that, uh, which now Sixers make makes so so easy. And so. The, the signing the artifacts in Kubernetes has been proposed in many areas. So uh, there was the binaries, the RPMs, uh, now the images, and but uh, it wasn't until until Sixer came along and uh, some of the public services uh, and infrastructure that they provide uh, that signing the images is uh, became a reality. Sixer is a project from. Uh, the Linux Foundation, and uh, it, it, it's it's uh, it's it's a project hosted on the, the on, under the Linux Foundation umbrella, and it's an open source project which uh, uh, tries to basically do what uh, Let's Encrypt did for uh, public certificates for websites. Um, it provides tools and uh, and public infrastructure uh, for for uh, people to use and freely use and, and sign artifacts. So when that came along, um, it opened the way for us to, to, to sign things. And so once we resolved uh, on signing the artifacts, um, we started the discussions around that. And that's where the KEP process comes in. So Kubernetes uh, has a, a process inside of the project uh where which is the way that uh all contributors and maintainers discuss any any enhancements that uh that they want to do the pro to the project and so when we started doing uh uh the the project uh, to sign things it became evident and and some people raised uh uh, not objections, but um, actually came and noticed. Okay, so this this should be a thing that should be publicly discussed, uh, and it's not something that uh, one person can take. And so we, so because it affects all of, all of the community and several consumers on stream, so we opened a cap um, to discuss how we were going to be signing the artifacts. Um, and the KEP, which uh, which stands for Kubernetes Enhancement Proposal, uh, are these public documents which are um, are committed to a GitHub repository. I can I can link the the signing release artifacts um, here uh, for everybody to see. So the idea is that you draft a document explaining your motivations and how things are going to work technically and depending on on which areas of project you want to talk open it for discussion and state your goals when you're going to be uh, plan to meet the, each of them and and you start uh, coding and yeah we started the discussion over there uh, and so we we opened two caps one for signing the artifacts and that cap is itself part of this other gap 
which is the salsa uh, compliance um, gap, which is an overarching effort to secure all of the uh, the, the release process of, of Kubernetes. Um, and yeah, and we started working on that. And the first goal we we said was to sign the container images, which is what we did for 124. Um, so we were working on that project like for a year, probably a little bit more. Uh, essentially, since Sixtor was in its early days, uh, we started the discussions with them um, on how we could collaborate and how the, the our tooling and their tooling could uh, uh, essentially fulfill the, the the technical tasks that we needed to do. And yeah, and it's been a quite a journey ever since. Well, wow, that's awesome. Um, sorry, Eric, I'll pass it right back to you. But for folks who don't know, salsa compliance is, um, and this this is a long acronym, so, uh, supply chain levels for software artifacts. That's salsa. So as we know, supply chain is you know all the things that come together and eventually you know make up your your product, your project, your application. At the end of the day, and um, software artifacts, of course, are uh, you know software artifacts so um it is it is pronounced like the food and it's just as delicious but basically what it's what it is is it's a set of compliance standards to improve kubernetes software supply chain security and it's a checklist of standards and controls that prevent tampering improve integrity and secure uh you know the packages and infrastructure in your projects so um i think that's really really cool and just wanted to explain that for folks who who might not have heard of salsa before and uh, think that we're talking about a delicious tomato condiment. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, it's funny. You Supply chain, I mean, I've, I've joked for the last 12 plus months, I mean, KubeCon and other conferences, you could probably have side conferences called Supply Chain Comp because it seems... <laughs> they <laughs> are, they are actually. But yeah, exactly, you're right. So now there are. And yeah. um, But I was interested, you, met, you mentioned that the discussion about signing Kubernetes artifacts has been around longer than... Cyber uh, the, than the um, the the White House mandate and the Solar Winds exploit and things that were like the that really popularized the need for hardening supply chain. Um, so I, I bet, I'm curious about that. So why I've been talking supply chain as a it would be nice to have for a long time um, at, at prior companies where we talked about containers and, and and caring about where you get those containers from. It was like. Let's see if we can Rube Goldberg build up something to at least trust a bit. I'm encouraged or I'm, I'm intrigued to hear what were the conversations five years ago that actually got people on board that early? Um, any, do you have any insights as to who was asking for it? Um, were you one of the ones asking for it? What, what, how did that start? Uh, no, it, it was basically, I, I mean, I wasn't, when I got into the project, the, the issues were already open. Okay. Uh, and so signing software artifacts is not new. I mean, since the early internet FTP days, you could download sure. a PGP signed binary. And so, and while we have issues open for signing things using GPG, I, I think the, the overarching spirit of that was we want integrity guarantees on the artifacts we're downloading, be okay. it as a GPG signed, uh, signed artifact or any other schema that you want. Um, but it was it was kind of difficult in the sense that uh, you need to, I mean, it's a lot of work because you have to establish uh, technical key handling. You have to uh, design protocols of who has access to the keys. How are you going to pull those keys into the signing processes? Are mm -hmm. you going to be signing things in a some guy's laptop somewhere are you building this into the your release process so um kubernetes it may be one of the largest projects open source projects in the world but it has the same pain uh, points as other open source projects and mainly it's the lack of uh developers and the lack of contributors um there's lots of people working on kubernetes uh but still uh, it's a really large project and, and all of the teams are spread really thin. So it's not easy. Uh, so it, uh, every, everybody in every SIG has 
goals that they're currently working on. And I can almost guarantee that uh, unless it's a feature that is now sponsored by a company somewhere, all of those volunteers are always lagging behind their goals and what they want to achieve. So uh, taking over a project like signing without a backing infrastructure like six or now provides, it would be, it was, I mean, it was feasible to do, but it simply required draining too much resources from the project, yeah. which we don't have too much of. Yeah, I mean, I, it makes sense. I mean, from the earliest days, I remember of you know, installing Red Hat, you were always like, get your RPMs, or even if you were new enough to be using Yum, it's like, oh, I have to trust what? Oh, bang, 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 bang. I guess that that makes sense. I should add that key. Hopefully that yeah, didn't, exactly. you know. So I, I'm glad to hear that, you know, sane minds were, were involved from the beginning. So you've mentioned SigStore a few times. I think we put up the link to it. Um, and SigStore is very interesting. I don't want to turn this into a, you know, a, 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 a SigStore uh, <laughs> everything, but uh, it's really, I think, I don't want to put words in, in your team's mouth or anything, but it seems like SigStore really accelerated or enabled the ability for this to happen um, and, and ma makes, I like to think of it like, uh, I'm a big SigStore fan. And I like to think of it as it makes signing anything doable by mere humans, right? As as opposed to GPG, which oh my gosh, I mean you can do it, but every time you, every time I do it, I have to pull up my notes again. It's like how the heck do I did this, did I do this last year or whenever it was? I need um, now that I'm having to rotate, you know, whatever. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got involved with Sigstore? Have you been there since early, or how long have you been involved with Sigstore? What why is Sigstore the what? Kubernetes chose to use for this. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, so I I've, I've been involved with Sixter. I've I've done some contributions contributions to the project, uh, but mostly from fixing things in the tooling that Kubernetes itself needed. Got it. Uh, so I uh, I started to get involved with Sixter really early on because of the chats we were having uh, mm -hmm. to to sign Kubernetes. Um, and yeah, like you said, uh, Sigstore is great because at the, the core of Sigstore itself is um, a project uh, called Recor, which is the transparency, the transparency log. And from that core, there have been lots of really, really interesting applications that have started um, coming and being developed by just by the fact of having a a publicly accessible and free to use transparency log available for projects to use has has uh, enabled the development of many projects from there. So the first one, of course, is uh, Fulcio, which is the, the, the certificate authority, which issues certificates, uh, public uh, X509 certificates, which uh, you can use to sign your software. But then you start seeing how other newer projects start building on top of those components. So you have the transparency log, then the CA. And then on top of that, you have tools like Cosign, which you can use to sign any container image. And Cosign can also sign things like attestations, uh, which are pieces of information that you can uh, uh, produce and sign to state a fact about the software piece, which may, we may be exploring a little bit in a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there are now other projects like, uh, for example, GitSign, which using the public six-store infrastructure allows you to sign your Git commits uh, with a, and you can actually go back to the transparency log and ensure that uh, the, the signature uh, for that commit is uh, coming from, from where it's supposed to be coming. Uh, so that's, well, that's, that's, well, that's what I, I, I love about Sixer, that it, it, yeah. it has enabled all of this ecosystem of tools, which make uh, tasks that were previously really hard to achieve now easy uh, for, for developers to implement. Yeah, so it, it occurs to me that as you, as you say that, that the important thing about signatures is not just that you have it, because anyone can make a, a digital signature of something. It's the trust is do you trust who signed it? And we know that through, you know, SSL implements that with uh, the browser. See, so you, you know that I trust that this is my bank because somebody that I trust certified the signature, right? It's, it's you know, uh, having 
those everyone thinks about Sigstore, they think about the cosign tool and how easy it is for, you know, as a developer, I can pick up and use. But that backing of Recore and Fulcio and all the things that are happening behind the scenes are what make it powerful and make it useful. Um, Sigstore, the project, is hosting um, the, the, those services for free right now. Is that going to be... How, how is... Is that, I mean, how do I word this? Uh, that's great for, for open source projects and development. What, what if I'm a, a, an organization that wants to, can I host my own copies of those things? And how do you see that happening? I mean, I know you're a chain guard and I don't want to turn this into a, you know, a chain guard company thing, but uh, it, that's what I would think as, you know, coming from the enterprise space, um, I may not want to rely on an external recore and, and full CO. Um, I might have my own corporate one. Is that how you see big companies using the project? Yeah, uh, no, I mean, not not in particular cases, but some mm -hmm. people have voiced that, and yeah. and yeah, and the project is designed to to be able to be used. Uh, well, so you can use any of the the six store components separately. So right. yeah, you you can run your own full SEO instance if you want, and and yeah, from from folks voicing those kinds of concerns, uh, we. We've seen some contributors in Sixtor ensuring that uh, those components are now more easily uh, deployable by organizations if they want. So there are things like um, Terraform. Uh, 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 there, there's Terraform code to to deploy your own Sixtor uh, components. There's, um, I think, there are, if I remember correctly. There were Helm charts to deploy some of the components, mm -hmm. so you can you can absolutely go and deploy your own six or instance internally, which doesn't have to necessarily rely on the on the public infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the the, the infrastructure is um, it's uh, being served by the project for free. Um, I think it's getting funded mostly through the OpenSSF. Mm, okay. uh, if I'm if I'm correct, this is this is me talking from, <laughs> out of my 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 turf, but I, I think funding is coming from there, and and uh, and yeah, the idea is to 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 have um, publicly really really high quality um, infrastructure serving all of the the project's needs. All right, cool. Well, we'll take a look at that more in a minute, and we'll do a, uh, a little bit of demo. I'm going to have you do a teach Eric how to use Sigstore, um, so I can learn everything that I've done I've learned wrong myself. Um, on my own. Um, but uh, I, I was curious, though, on for uh, the 124 release, uh, as as you went through the process of, of implementing the cap and getting everything signed, were there any challenges you hit that you had to get past that companies might have the same kind of challenges as they're trying to sign their own artifacts? And I think as we were talking before uh, the call, I think you said there was a little bit of a challenge on 125 that's coming out next week. Is that when is 125 go live? Yeah, next week. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything you want to share around uh, challenges you faced or are yeah. facing? Well, uh, the Kubernetes project is very particular in the way it releases things. And actually, in all of the CI and the way it runs its CI CD pipelines and the way it releases uh, its artifacts and merges code into the project. Uh, because some of, some of the things that you now take for granted in things like GitHub or GitLab, things and another um, source code, uh, uh, source control management tools or websites, um, were actually built by the Kubernetes project as implemented because they didn't exist a few mm -hmm. years back. So uh, you. Today, you have things like GitHub Actions, where you just put a YAML and it runs things for you. But then back then, it didn't exist. So the Kubernetes project has its own infrastructure that runs the jobs, builds the artifacts, uh, runs the testing. And uh, and the same thing is true for the release tooling. Uh, we have quite a sophisticated release tooling for the project that uh, does everything from building, ensuring artifacts are correct. Um, uh, generating the release notes, now generating SVOM, signing the artifact. And so 
when Sixter started coming out its tools, some of those were designed to be used by the most common development settings. Like for example, if you have a container image, you can run a command and it'll do that for you. But Kubernetes has, for example, in the, the way we release images in Kubernetes is that projects stage those images and then you open what is called a, uh, you open a PR for to run what it's called an image promotion uh, process, which basically takes the staged images and moves those to the production repositories. Uh, and so in the way we admit those images from staging to production is via this PR, which has to be authorized by the people who are well, trusted to do so. And and so we don't we not only do that promotion but also uh we mirror the images to to a bunch of, of mirrors so uh while the sixter tooling at the time was uh good enough for people to sign their own container images and maybe even dropping it into things like github, GitHub actions we had particular requirements and we had to uh so we had to actually take the six store code and build it into the release process of Kubernetes. So it, it was, um, well, since Kubernetes releases happen in, in, it's not just one process that runs in, but it's at several stage process. We had to build signing into some parts and moving the signatures, uh, at other times and things like that. Um, and this is why, so for example, uh, the way we build signing into the project is that when whenever someone promotes a container image, we, as an organization, stamp that image with a Kubernetes uh, organization signature. And so this makes uh, signing available and basically free for any of the projects because Kubernetes, it may be the usual components that people know, which are the kubelet, uh, the API server, and things like that. But there's also a hundred plus other projects inside a, inside of the Kubernetes organization. Uh, things like uh, the container runtimes, things like the storage drivers, and lots of other projects which also produce images. And so by building signing into our image promoter, we were able to 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 give those signing uh, services to any of the other projects as well. So right now. Whenever any of the of those 100x projects uh, puts out an image, we sign that we sign it, and so all of this custom tooling has been uh, has been going and has has been using as much as we can from the six or libraries, but it's it's all custom for for the project, and then it's what we were just discussing. So uh, right now we are in the process of moving the image serving from Kubernetes from Google Container Registry. And we will now have more mirrors inside of the new Google service, which is called Artifact Reg Registry, but also mm -hmm. mirrored in AWS for because AWS clusters pull a lot of images from Kubernetes. So we are in the process of also building um, mirroring inside of AWS. So in the process of all of this and uh, of testing the infra changes and, and because it's so, um, container image promotion involves copying the source images to all of those mirrors. And in the process of, of doing that in, we, yeah, we had like a, yesterday when we were cutting the RC one for Kubernetes, we had a, uh, a problem, uh, with the image, with the signature replication, which, uh, got, uh, delayed the, the release a little bit. Yeah, I know from, um, so I'm in SIG security and um, SIG security tooling team and I have been going round and round because that new process has introduced a multi redirect on uh, image pulls. Um, and we do, we, they use sneak to scan the go code and uh, it wasn't, ha and the containers, and it wasn't handling redirects that go to redirects that go to, you know, possible, you know, chaining of redirects correctly. So we actually fixed a bug today. In the, everyone update your sneak uh, CLIs because there's a bug fix for that today. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so it's been interesting to see from the, the security side of it to the, the, as a customer of that. Um, it's 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 kind of raw right now, but it, it seems to be it seems to be going well. So um, I'm curious if so you're in SIG, SIG release have other CNCF projects. So at the tag level, so if those of you not sure, uh, SIGs nowadays are special interest groups in the Kubernetes projects project. Um, CNCF, which oversees all of that, has tags. They used to be six, but now they're technical. What does tag stand for? It advisory group. So te technical advisory group. So it was too confusing to know if a SIG was a CNCF or a Kubernetes. So at the CNCF level, they have the tags. Is there a, a, a body, an advisory group at the CNCF level that is going to take some of the learnings you've done here and see if they can help other CNCF projects sign their images? Are you involved in anything like that? Yeah, so the, the CNCF uh, tag security, security tag, uh, well, the, 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 mm -hmm. the security tag has been uh, also working on some of uh, supply chain uh, mm -hmm. recommendations. They have a really nice white paper, which everybody running an open source project uh, should read. Yep. And yeah, we've been in constant contact with them. Um, and the idea is that some of the things that we've been building into Kubernetes uh, also benefit other projects outside of the Kubernetes organization. And I've been actually involved in some of this uh, myself. I've been, for the for this whole year, I've been trying to uh, uh, standardize, standardize some of the, and, and actually split out the, the components we use to secure the Kubernetes uh, re release process and supply chain. I've been trying to spin the, that code out into general purpose um, tools that can be reused uh, for by other projects. And I've been in contact with other projects, like, for example, um, Vitesse, the database, with um, Istio, with uh, Knative, mm -hmm. things like that, so that we can also uh, share some of the things we do there here with them. Uh, so if, for example, if you go and uh, check the uh, Istio SVOM, it was built using the Kubernetes uh, SVOM tool. And um, so when we started building some of these things, we we really rushed to get things uh, in there. And as trailblazers, we hit a lot of mistakes. Some of some of the architecture initially was wrong, and we've been correcting. And uh, and we now have like a really nice uh, uh, development plan. Uh, uh, which uh, I'm confident we can we we can now share with other projects, cool. and I'm 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 actually working right now on the last missing piece, which is uh, an attestation building for builder, uh, which allows you to uh, express the transformations you did to your source code to get it into usable artifacts, and that is uh, that is the the concept that gets attested in a file which you then sign and provide to downstream consumers. And so Kubernetes is going to get that project. Uh, I'm hoping to, to start the donation of that project next week. And that project will be able to generate data stations, which you can sign using SigStore and then attach to your, to your artifacts. And, um, and yeah, so most of this work has been in coordination with the security tag in some way or another. Okay. Well, cool. I think that's a good segue. Uh, Kyle, did you have anything else before we go into demo mode? Yeah. So I think um, there's some really unique things about the SIG store project. Um, not just that it's, you know, comprised of a ton of projects like Cosign and Folksio and all that, but um, they do a lot of development in the open. Like they have a lot of office hours. They're live streamed on YouTube. Um, they do like community meetings. But um, I was hoping we could talk a little bit about like the way that um, SigStore deals with like trust anchors, right? So trust anchors are things that we assume to be secure and, you know, we derive, um, you know, our trust in something from the security of the trust anchor, right? So whether uh, that is the, uh, how hard it is to, you know, get to 100 digit prime numbers from, you know, uh, the, the product of those two numbers, right? So um, I think, Maybe we should talk a little bit about that because I think that's kind of um, interesting. So, like the SigStore root key, um, 
is made up of like five key holders in the community, right? And that's all like publicized on GitHub. So you can actually see who owns the keys, right? So they're operating in in plain sight. So I think that's really interesting. And it, it very much, you know, is like a community initiative. The keys are held by community members. And um, so I just think that's really, really interesting and like super unique because uh, like Eric was saying, it's great to have signatures, but how do we know that we trust, you know, things are what they say they are. And uh, so, yeah, I definitely implore uh, people to go check out github.com slash sig store slash root hyphen signing if you want to know more about how they do that. And um, also check out their blog because there's a lot of interesting stuff in there. And I, I was doing a lot of reading to prepare for this. And I think, yeah, it's definitely uh, very unique. And uh, it's a very human approach, right, to, to cryptography and signing. And it seems like, yeah, it's going to be integrated into developer environments, seamless. You know, they're doing some Git keyless signing stuff. So uh, super interesting to see all these developments. And uh, I don't know if you had anything to say about that, Adolfo, but I think that's a, a pretty unique aspect of this project. Yeah, the the the, the, the key is the, the way the key uh, owners are defined is a really interesting process. So we, the, the first initial... I don't know if bootstrap is the right word, but the, the initial initial genesis of the, the six or root was done in a in a public uh, key signing uh, ceremony, um, which was actually broadcasted uh, on YouTube. And and so there there were the so the, the key the owners of the key are defined by using tough in a part tough the the, the update framework, uh, which is applied in a particular way to define the key holders in, in, in Sigstor. And so the when the ceremony was taking place, there was a host uh, organizing things and, and the uh, the key holders were uh, opening their Yubi keys and in live on video and um, posting the verifications and, and everybody who was watching was able to run the verifier commands and just post it back on the on the issue and and yeah so there are uh if i'm not mistaken there are five key holders which uh, in in order to 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 uh own uh, to 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 own the 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 key that there have to be three present at any time and then they get rotated uh every six months i think and in its representatives from from many companies and um yeah it's a it's a, a really uh cool thing to to see and it's always like each any all of these things are always uh done in not in a serious corporate way but it's uh like really humans having fun which is uh, a part of the the draw of sixer yeah yeah that's awesome um yeah i think we could hop right into demos Okay, cool. So um, what I have, and I'll go ahead and, Kyle, you work the magic of uh, getting my screen to show up. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I have a simple, it doesn't matter what's in it. It's just, it's a Java app, but uh, it's, a, it's a container um, that I just built. And what I want to do is I want to, I'm starting from a clean slate. I have Cosign installed. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm on, for those who care, I'm on an M1 Mac uh, that's running Homebrew. So I just did brew install cosine. And I'm running Docker Desktop, is that's how I built the image. Um, and I'm going to be pushing this to my personal Docker Hub um, account. Okay. I've not pushed this image anywhere yet, it's just sitting locally. What would be my first step? Um, and I'm kind of interested, if it's not too complicated for this, to use the um, keyless signing functionality to use maybe my 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 google oauth um for that so what what's my first step so if i if i, I know if i do a cosine help i'm gonna get a lot of stuff but yeah, where, where would i start so the the first one is uh i'd recommend that you uh you push the image to to where you because you're you're gonna be attaching that signature to the registry where that image lives. Okay, we'll do that. And I've already logged in. So, so I don't have to give away my key like I might do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So some of the uh, a few as you uh, just showed, Cosign has like lots of uh, functionality already built into it uh, because it 
it not only manages the cryptographic of operations of signing artifacts, but it also is a, a full blown uh, container OCI at, attacher, if so mm -hmm. to speak. So it, it, it's able to read and write things into, into um, OCI registries. Uh, so it has lots of, of things in, in there. Um, so as you said, the the way that we are hoping and it's well it's it's almost there uh, it's already there uh, to sign things is what we call keyless uh, signing which is not really keyless but the way right. it works is that um, Sixter will issue for you a short-lived certificate which you can use to sign your artifacts and it expires in I don't know five ten minutes and then you can forget about that certificate because it's no longer uh, usable uh, for signing. Uh, the signatures, of course, are verifiable forever mm -hmm. uh, because of the, the the certificate is is yeah, uh, stored in the transparency log. So uh, even when that certificate is expired, you cannot use it for signing, but you can use it to verify uh, the signatures. Um, and so um, this is one of the ways of signing, and it's, it's uh, the preferred way because it's more secure and it's easier mm -hmm. uh, because you don't have to, have to handle any any keys. Uh, but uh, Cosign also supports all of the various various cloud based uh, KMS systems and uh, the HSM protocol. So uh, if you need any of those, are there they are there too. Okay. And yeah, to sign the image, you just have to basically issue the Cosign sign command um, and feed it the, the reference of your image. You have to, so for now, you have to proceed, if you want to use keyless signing, you have to proceed, uh, you have to set up a, an environment variable, which is cosine experimental. Uh, cosine experimental, yeah. The one I'm assuming. Exactly. So the, the reason you have to set that that um, that the environment variable is because Sixtor is, finishing its GA uh, process, that, uh, so the general availability of the of the project's infrastructure. Um, there's lots of work going behind that, like everything from writing policy to uh, to testing, monitoring of the infrastructure, everything is getting is being built as we speak. Uh, so uh, it, it, we the, the project intends to keep the the experimental flag until GA is announced, uh, which should be happening soon. Okay, so uh, I've got yeah the variable, so and then saying cosine sign, and then I'm giving it the full tag for my image. Right, that should be enough. Okay, and it's saying a lot of stuff. I'm guessing it's saying I'm saying I, I'm comfortable with this. Exactly. Yeah. So that what is asking you is that some of the information you're feeding into it is going to be stored in the the transparency log. Uh, so if you're okay with your identity being associated with a signature of the image, then just consent to it, and okay. it's, because it's going to be queryable forever. And then it'll present you with this login screen, which allows you to pick from um, uh, several uh, OIDC providers uh, to prove your identity. And then it feeds it back to Cosign, and it's already signing and pushing the signature. So at this point, your image is signed. And that's all you had to do. Wow, that's easy. So wait a minute. So now if I go to Docker Hub and look, what am I going to see? OK, yeah, you're going to see some 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 artifacts are already living along your image. So we see, here's my image that I mm -hmm. pushed. And then a few seconds ago, this thing got pushed. Exactly. Which so, is the dot .sig. Exactly. Uh, Cosign uses a, a particular a uh, hacky way to attach signatures to container images. Uh, and the way it, it, it does that is that it creates what we could call uh, an image, which is not really a container image. It's just an artifact container containing the signature. Uh, and it tags it like that. So it's the digest of your image and appended with a .c extension. Or uh, uh, it's not really an extension. It's just a string of the name of the of the container label. Yep. Um, and so that way, the signature can be uploaded into the registry and associated uh, with your image. And using this 
this way of attaching artifacts. Uh, Cosine ensures that it works almost with any uh, registry out there. And so currently the, the OCI, the Open Container Containers Initiative is working on a standardized way of attaching things to container images. Mm -hmm. And the proposal has been accepted. And once it's uh, finalized, uh, SIGSTORE is going to move its uh, attaching logic to use the new standard, which should be uh, hopefully this year, I hope. Okay. So um, is what you're saying that this will actually be an attribute of the image instead of itself being a new image tag? Uh, in in the in with the new standard? Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah exactly um exactly oh, it's awesome. gonna be uh yeah so I I'm I'm not the OCI expert to talk to but the way I understand it is that just in the same way that manifests allow you to to uh, relate layers to an image mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to to have other other attachments mm -hmm. reference to images that's awesome that's gonna be yep. so cool yeah okay. absolutely so now that i've done that now let's uh change hats let's say i want to i'm somebody else and i want to verify that this image is signed and who signed it what's the uh, way to do that okay so it's also really easy just uh go sign verify and the image reference Oh, and oh, I forgot uh, the uh, experimental. Mm. Do I need do I need experimental to check a signature? Hmm. No, we probably missed something. It's wanting a key. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you have to do experimental because it's going to ah. fetch the key from the infrastructure, the public key. Oh, you have 48 at the beginning there. OK, we got stuff back. So it's saying claims are were validated. Uh, existence of the claims were uh, in the transparency log were verified online and were verified against the full CO roots and a bunch of JSON. Exactly. Yeah, so that uh, you, what, what that gives you back is uh, essentially, uh, the uh, information about what was signed, and the and it, it, you can also, if you decode the the base sixty four mm -hmm. uh, blob in there, you I think it's uh, the the certificate used to sign the the key. Okay, cool. The, and the I image. can see that it, it's showing my who I was, who it says I was. Exactly. Right there. there. And this is this is working with uh, OpenID Connect, uh, mm -hmm. which is chained back to Google to verify who that you you were you were actually you. Very cool. So the other thing I wanted to try is I'm going to do a container scan against this um, test against it. Um, what do I call this thing? Sneak live one and i'm going to output that as json i'm going to dump that to we'll just call it um oh bone scan dot json this is doing a standard sneak container test same as if you were doing docker scan um I just want to create a JSON file. And we want to sign this as an attestation of this is what the Vuln scan was at the time we ran it. Exactly. Yeah, so the the, the cool thing about the testing an image is that you can have information to state something. So um, using an attestation of a vulnerability scan, you can, you can inform your users that someone looked at this image at a particular point in time and is claiming that is vulnerability free or maybe or not or whatever and and by attaching that station uh to the image it opens up a whole new world of possibilities like for example if you want to uh, enact policy on that image uh or maybe uh establish or maybe just do some uh i mean in the in the case of vulnerability scans you can uh 
do things like, for example, I don't want to trust images that are not scanned, for example, or that have a, a threshold of, of the severity of the vulnerabilities contained in them and things like that. It helps if I use the right argument. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Too used to kube CTL. Really cool uh, flag that I learned about, Eric, because I was messing with this at Black Hat is um, double hyphen JSON file output. And then, oh, really? Yeah, JSON file output. And then you put equals and then the name of the file you want to pop it to. Good to know. There we go. So we now, we now have an actual JSON file. And uh, this is awesome because if you think about it, right, like both of these things work into your CI CD workflow super well, right? They're both CLI based tools. Mm -hmm. So you could actually get a, um, you know, an S bomb format because we do S bomb format outputs and sign and store them, uh, you know, store the signatures. So I think um, that is just super cool, you know, using cosine, using all of that. So I think, uh, you know, that's a very valid application, probably something, you know, we'll see a lot of people doing, right? Like signing, validating their S-bombs, you know, so that they have some sort of attestation um, as far as, you know, what, what sort of uh, supply chain dependencies they're pulling into their environment. So I think uh, these two things work very well together. Yeah, so, so for example, S-bombs are an interesting case because they don't have an intrinsic way of, of uh, signing them. So, for example, in Cyclone DX, as long as you can wrap them uh, to sign them, and SPDX doesn't have a, a way currently to to recommend the, to to sign, but you can absolutely uh, create an attestation and and include the SBOM in that attestation, mm. and that allows you to be signed and attached uh, to the images. And um, and yeah, so attestations are really uh, just a an opening door which will allow uh, for all sorts of uses uh, to to be to be done. So, for example, we at Schenger we use Nick uh, for we have a project of of uh, of uh, minimal container images out, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, built daily several times a day, which are supposed to be the minimal uh, image possible to run things and. With them, uh, which is we see that as a successor to the Distroless project, right? Um, and we use Nick a lot to scan those images, and because when you choose an, an image base, a base image for your project, we can easily uh, show. Okay, if you run, uh, I don't know, for the Debian base image, you'll get a bunch of uh, vulnerabilities listed, but mm -hmm. run it against ours, and and it's all almost most of the time zero yep. so we produce attestations of those and, and attach them to the images cool so what do i need to do to sign this uh this json file okay so uh you need to do cosign attach and then no no cosign attest sorry oh, attest. And then you you need to give it the predicate so in an attestation the way an attestation works is um you have a subject and a predicate, and the and basically the way you could phrase it is the I am doing to these things, which are the subjects of the attestation, mm -hmm. whatever is I'm, I'm saying about this subject, this which is a predicate which is contained in the in the in the in the attestation predicate. So um, if you don't uh, you pass you pass a cosine attest the predicate with the file that you want to use as a predicate and then so yeah predicate and then the, the your json file okay. and then the image reference uh. so if we if we run it like this uh oh well, i mean run it and uh, and yeah run it Open my thing over in the other window. Uh, let's say mm -hmm. Google. I went and exported the experimental because I was tired of typing it. Okay, I was I was wondering about that. <laughs> I, I was thinking it may be a bug, but okay. Okay, so that generated the attestation. You you cannot see it here just now, but we're going to take a look. So what it did is it uh, generated the attestation and it stored it into the 
transparency log. Okay. So to see what it did, just run go sign download at the station and then the image reference. And what? Uh, cosine download at the station and then uh, the image reference. And you may want to pipe that through JQ if you have it. Wow. Well, that's a, that's a lot of stuff in there. Uh, so. <laughs> It's a pretty big file, probably, because it's a very vulnerable image. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so the, 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 the... I'll put this to, uh, we'll just say, x.json. <laughs> I think we entered the matrix. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll do... Um... Do I need to pipe this? Do I need to base64 to code this, I'm guessing? Yeah, yep, you, you can do that. Uh, so, so we're gonna do uh, go to, uh, JQ. We need to do a JQ, data. right? What are we looking for uh, JQ. Then uh, uh, dash R. I think it's for row. Just to strip it of the quotes, and then dot payload. 64, do I have to put a dash D? Dash D, dash. And that's JSON. And, that's, that's, and, oh, yeah, wow. and I'll repipe it to, to JQ to format it. Yeah. Oh. I, again, it was a big uh, phone report. Yeah, so. Um, what we're mostly interested right, interested in right now is uh, the 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 topmost part of the um, of the is that okay yeah so as you can see it's an in total statement um, so cosine uses the uh, in total format for attestations in total is a is a great open source project which is uh, uh, geared towards securing the whole supply chain of a, of a, of, a, of software projects. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend it's under the CNCF umbrella as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, if you see it, it in the under the predicate type, it uses the cosine generic attestation. Uh, cosine supports uh, different uh, kinds of uh, different types of attestations. There's one for a vulnerability scan, and there are also S bombs. Uh, there are uh, S bombs in SPDX format, in Cyclone DX format, and well, a, a bunch more. And then you can see the content of the of the actual security scan uh, that Sneak performed under there, mm -hmm. and and it should be well. And that's uh, that's a, the payload that gets signed and attached to the to the image. So whenever you are working with that image, you can uh, you could potentially query to see if it has been scanned for security vulnerabilities and ensure that it's coming from who is supposed to. Uh, because what good is a falsified uh, security scan if if someone can hide a flaws in an image, right? So uh, by signing and attesting to to the scan, you can. Uh, you can always have the, the security information uh, next to the to the image. And this is where you would put, the, if, if, when I built the attestation, I could uh, specify the type here. Type is well, yeah. Got it. Well, cool. We are at time, but this has been really cool. And I'm going to play with this a lot more, I'm sure. Um, before we uh, say goodbye, is there anything else, uh, anything going on cool with Cosign or uh, SigStore that we, we want need to know about or, or SIG release? Yeah. Besides well, 25 trying to get out the door. Yeah, well, yeah, on the on the on the six or side, uh, there's gonna be uh, a six or day during KubeCon, uh, which uh, it's a co-located event, which is mm -hmm. uh, the, the attendance capacity is very limited. I think it's to fifty, uh, two hundred and fifty persons. So if you want to, if that's something that interests you, want to want to register to it, so 
like now. <laughs> and um, stay also tuned for the GA announcement coming out soon uh, mm -hmm. on, on that front. And on, on Kubernetes, we are still working on the we're still working on the on the signature cap. Uh, we already have container images signed, but we're working on the attestations with, that we just saw. Mm -hmm. And we are also working on uh, signing the binaries that we put out. So if if you want to uh, help the project and this is a subject that interests you, uh, jump on the SIG, uh, SIG release release engineering calls and say hi, and we have some work that we can give you. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Adolfo, for joining us. Kyle, any other parting thoughts? Um, also, uh, it seems like SigStore is having a conference as well, SigStoreCon. So if you're very, very interested in signing all the things, you should definitely check it out. It seems like it's going to be pretty interesting. And uh, Bob Bob says, thanks for sharing the knowledge. Thank you for coming and hanging out with us, Bob Bob. Really appreciate it. So um, without further ado, Eric, unless you got anything else, uh, I'll close this out here. No, awesome. So uh, thank you, Adolfo Gar Garcia Veidia, for coming on with us today. Thank you so much, Eric Smalling, for bringing this wonderful guest on. I uh, am super honored that I got to speak with you all today and ask all these questions. And, um, you know, I think uh, chat really, really liked what we put out there today. So, yeah, if you like content like this, make sure that you're following the Twitch channel. If you're on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe. We will, uh, Adolfo, I'm sure this isn't the last we'll be seeing of you. It sounds like uh, we can definitely uh, talk for hours and hours about this sort of stuff. So oh, yeah. hopefully we'll have you back very, very soon. Thank you so much for coming on and have a great day, everyone. Thank you for having me.